All right. Let's see. Are we live? There we go. Let's see. Uh, hopefully, y'all can see me and hear me. I do have a new mic on, so if anyone in here can see me and hear me well, just go ahead and give me a a thumbs up or something. Okay, so we got a couple people in here. I'm going to turn the volume off on my computer. It looks like I am uh, able to be heard. So first of all, welcome everyone. Uh, hello, my name is Matt with Grafted Branch Homestead and welcome to the Quell Shack Chat with Matt um, where I like to go over uh, some fellowships, some celebrations, um, some product reviews, DIYs, Skillshare, um, you're going to get some gardening, some animal going on, cooking, and some other things like that. Hello, CDB. Good to see you. Thanks for hopping in and helping out today. Volume's good. Okay, awesome. So that's good. Um, anyways, and just some general sh chat. And so lately we've been talking about some other things not necessarily quail related. Uh, tonight is going to be pretty much all quail related. So I'm just going to go through a couple updates and things that have been going on here around our urban homestead. Um, so life has been extremely busy this week. My, my kids are in school. Uh, my oldest son is starting soccer. And so we've had a whole lot going on. Um, although I have been able to get a few things done around here. And so first thing I want to point out is my new shirt. This shirt is from Sanctified Supply Company. Again, um, excellently made uh, high quality shirts. Um, so this one actually says, not my way, Yahweh. And so if you're unfamiliar with that, Yahweh is the God of the Bible. And this is, shirt is just reminding me uh, not to follow my own way, but to follow His way. And those, that's the wisest decision. And I need those constant reminders all the time, uh, just as I need forgiveness all the time as well. I am most certainly not perfect. However, I'm constantly trying to be a little bit more like the Creator. So, um, let's see. Tonight, uh, we don't have the boys actually. So tonight is an extremely... Uh, hi, Ti Tiny Tim Posey. Uh, Posse, sorry, good to see you. How are you doing? Um, so anyways, tonight was one of the extremely rare occasions that we didn't have our boys actually. They were away and so that rarely ever happens. So me and my wife took it as an opportunity to do a little bit of gardening. Ooh, I saw something. A little bit of gardening and uh, we, we actually went through the garden. We picked our own, our vegetables and things. I'm hearing the chickens go into bed. Um, and then we cooked that up together and made amazing meals. So if any of you saw my little short, that was actually uh, the beautiful woman I was getting to cook dinner with was my wife. And so we, we made a lot of things, most all of it straight from the garden. And actually we're getting to the point where it's easier to list off the ingredients that didn't come from the garden. And so we had a uh, sugar beet and carrot. Um, we, we, we chopped those up and roasted them in the oven. Absolutely delicious. We did a potato, chard, and uh, cayenne pepper uh, stir fry. That was extremely good. And then we did a, uh, well, we did a roast in the crock pot. Now that wasn't from the, uh, the garden, but we put some barbecue sauce with that, some sandwiches, and got to enjoy that and watching some movies with my wife. So it was a, a good evening this evening. Um, it is getting kind of late. <laughs> the sun's going down earlier. I get up extremely early. So uh, starting next week, we are going to push the stream back to uh, still after sundown, but to 7.45 Mountain Time. So it'll be an hour earlier. Let's see. Oh, I did want to give a shout out to Ultimate SNS. I stumbled over his name in my last live stream. I just had a, a brain fart, I guess, but I did want to give a shout out to him. He was who I was trying to shout out last stream as well. Um, he was first one in here in the chat, actually this time, so that's awesome. And then um, his channel is great and it is all encompassing all over the board, so go check him out. And uh, let's see, people are saying hi, awesome. Okay, cool, and let's see. So what else is going on? Uh, some updates. In the last stream, we created our own flower from the wheat. So we haven't gotten that planted yet. That still needs about a month. We have some other things going in that spot right now and cucumbers and whatnot. Um, I haven't made the bread from the wheat we've ground yet. It's just been too busy. However, we have come up with some recipes. Um, and oh, and with dinner and the bread said, actually my wife, uh, was she's an excellent cook we all love cooking in the family and she was wanting to get behind the camera a little bit and cook for you guys a little bit the way we eat and uh, the things we do and be able to do some segments on that so a quick one in the chat i guess uh would you guys be interested in seeing some cooking videos with my wife and the rest of my family on the way we eat and the things we do and some yummy food let's see 
Um, well, if you guys are interested, you can put that in the chat, enter that in the comments, and, and she would be happy to do some streams there. Uh, we were, I was going to get to some seed saving this week. I really need to get on that. However, New Mexico has been going through a really wet time and some monsoons, so seed saving just uh, isn't good right now. You do want to wait till they're drier, so we haven't done any more on that. Um, a, a food I wanted to showcase or a plant this week actually is the mini bell pepper. These are from Papa Pepper again, as most of my garden is. And this one could have gone a little bit longer, but I pulled it because I, I lost one of my other ones. But they come in a variety of colors, amazing taste. Uh, so these are mini bells, and those are some of the seeds I'm gonna save and will be in the Etsy shop. Let's see, we have, I was gonna bring my grapes out because those have been doing great. They are almost all ready. The vines have been turning brown on them and we are about to pull a ton of grapes. Um, let's see, oh. So with the quail uh, cage here, the Wynola Ranch, and a little some more updates on how that's going. Um, I really do like this cage. There are some things I do not like that I will be still in the process of building my own. But one of the things I did do to upgrade it this week was the quail waters it came with were kind of like this. And they're these little cups. And they sit inside the cage. And these are good. They refill, except for the problem is the quails are really skittish. They jump around. They jump on these. They were knocking all kinds of water, flooding the bottom of the tray, which uh, I had fear that, that maybe some mites or other bugs would come, which we're going to get into that in a little bit. So what I did was I got these troughs by Wynola Ranch. I do need to get some covers for them, but let me show that. And so let's see. So it's just a little trough that hangs on the back of each one there. And these are filled with water and they have the little float to keep them full. So I'm going to cut, get covers for those. Another thing I can do to keep flies and things out of here is just sprinkle a little bit of diatomaceous earth on top of that water. And that's something else we'll get into a little bit later here as well. So let me restabilize my camera. Okay. We got the new quail waters there. Let's see. A um, couple other things that were supposed to be, and I have some notes here. I'm trying to be a little more organized as we go, but a couple other things, uh, updates. Um, I had talked about in our water video was getting the rain catchment system in. Um, now I had actually ordered a rain barrel and system to come off the roof. Then I can purify that water and you know, or use it in the garden or whatnot. Um, so I actually got ripped off. That was a scam. <laughs> If it looks too good to be true, it probably is. And so I got ripped off. Luckily, I was able to get my money back on that one and, uh, and found one even cheaper that I'm hoping is okay that's supposed to come in the mail on Monday. And so we'll be doing a video on that to come. Um, let's see. Oh, a couple things I did want to show outside. I wanted to show my elderberry plant because I, I ended up, I got about six of these sticks in the mail and uh, I was able to propagate those and those are in some videos. Uh, a little while back and only one of them survived but it's doing great so I was going to show that elderberry plant and then on the way there I'm going to go ahead and show you out uh, the quail and chicken egg experiment and so I did a short on that as well where I actually took four of the fertilized quail eggs and put them under one of my chickens that's gone broody and so we're just going to see what happens there so let's go outside real quick we'll take a look at that let me check out chat real fast let's see uh, right, the first time, like, ring around the rosy pocket full of posies. And then the people are saying hi to each other. That's awesome. Uh, my na last name is, like, ring around the rosies. Oh, pocket full of posies. Oh, okay, I'm sorry I, I butchered your name. I get it. Hey, Arizona Highland. Uh, hey, Nick. Good to see you in here. And so uh, we're just going about a little few going-ons around here and updates, and then I'm going to dig into the video. Uh, today's video was labeled, um, this is in a series of four videos actually I'm doing here, and it's going to be on quail problems. Now these are for your adult quail, and uh, I do want to pre preface tonight with saying I am not an expert. I've only had my quail for about a year, and I'm going to dig into that a little bit more. But the things I'm going to discuss are things I've researched as well as things I've seen. A lot of them are failures I've had, and so I'm trying to learn from that. And so we're going to dig into that, but first let's go look at that elderberry and those quail eggs real quick. Oh, while we're in here, I was able to get a little bit more of the quail thing done. This door needs to be put on, but I'm putting in some more of the mantle and things. And so we got a few going on here. All right, so let's come out here real quick around the edge. And my yard is always a mess, so I do apologize. It is dark as well. 
we might be able to see. So this is my elderberry plant off a little stick and it's actually doing pretty good here. It's been pretty wet. Okay, I mean, let me set up the camera here. So originally I had taken two quail eggs and put two under each of the birds in here. And so let's see if we can see where they are. So I have two broody ones. The bigger one, Betty here, has taken all of the quail eggs under her. But we can lift her up and see you can see they're under here. And they are warm and doing well. So it's been close to a week. I'm going to give that another couple days and then we'll candle those and see if they're doing anything. So there is the update on the chicken quail experiment. So we will head back here, back into the quail shack. And so I've actually been able to afford and get two roof panels. Um, I know you can't really see because everything's still under the tarp as I haven't finished the roof, but I was able to get two metal panels and put them on there. Um, one of the problems I'm running into is I'm building this quail shack into the old quail shack, basically. And so I need to put a roof on the grow out pin. That's going to be the grow out pin. Um, to keep the rain off of it because what's happening is the water's running off this roof onto that roof and then back in. So I need to get that removed and put a gutter system on there as for another video. So let's get set up here again and we'll dive into what we are actually going to talk about today. So let's see. Let me shut this real quick. Keep out the bugs and flies and dog. Okay. Let's see. Oh, one other thing I wanted to talk about just real quick and uh, that is some DIYs I'm working on as well as revenue streams and stuff. The reason I want to point this out is not to promote myself on it, but is one of the things I was really looking at when I first started looking at homesteading, possibly getting off the grid or off the system, is finding ways to remove myself from that normal uh, job and normal things. And so that's what I'm on a mission to do and, and trying to seek out different ways. And so I am hoping it's useful by me sharing some of these ideas and things I'm doing with everyone here, um, hopefully to give you some inspiration or something. So some of the things I have going on, I am working on a book and that's actually about quail and I'm not gonna go into it too much because I'm excited about it, but I'm getting my ideas to put out a couple books um, that can hopefully help people. And so I got that going. Let's see. Um, I've been selling quail eggs like crazy, and so that's awesome. We've been getting some of that done. It's actually been paid for all their food and things. And so at this point, we are in the black and positive with the quail. Um, I have a shirt design coming out with our Grafted Branch logo inside of Zia, and I think it's kind of a, a neat shirt. And so I'm going to be putting a couple of those out here coming up as well as some other um, quail items like dry, dried quail feet and things like that. And so those are some revenue streams. And let me hop in chat just real quick and see what's going on. People are saying hello, awesome. Your construction is awesome, Matt. Looks like an awesome village for the homestead animals. I love building. I love growing and building and you know, building and growing things up. So um, that, is, that is something I like doing. Thanks for m mentioning that. Okay, so today, um, I've had my quail for almost a year here. I've uh, built my incubator, I, I bought the eggs, I raised them from eggs, got them to the point they are now. Now I haven't taken their eggs and incubated those out yet for several reasons. Um, but what I really wanna talk about in this series, which is gonna be four videos on quail problems, is basically initially looking at your quail, some things you're gonna see or you may encounter so that there's hopefully no surprises if you're either looking at getting into quail or wondering some of the things your quail are doing. Now I currently have four quail cage setups and luckily each one of them is kind of in a different stage of some things that are going on. So today's episode or part I guess is going to be on feather uh, loss and aggression and so I'm going to talk about those two things. Now I've decided to do four parts on the birds because I really need to break it down. It's just a lot of information. And so I'm going to go from the head down. And so I thought an obvious place to start would be feathers. If you are going with quail, one of the things you are going to notice is they lose feathers for multiple reasons, but that is normal. That is common. Um, kind of freaked me out at first. And I thought, am I doing things right? What's going on? So uh, some neighbors are out. But anyway, so I'm going to explore a couple of those things. Um, one of the first things you're going to encounter is... Uh, definitely all the time if you have males and females together is some of that mating and so I have a male here 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull out some of these quails, so you have to be patient with me. So this is one of my male, and I have a band on his foot. This really helps identifying for when you're watching your flock and finding out what different problems. Now a lot of times he's the only male in this cage. Originally I had had two males in here and about four females for each. Um, so your flocks are going to be different in what you're doing, the cage setup you have, and all these different things. I have found about four females and one male works best. And I'm going to go into ratio in a little bit here, but with this size cage, uh, that works best. So I did have battling between the males. You're going to get a lot of aggression between male birds as they're showing dominance. Um, if there's not enough females, too many females, or they're in too enclosed space. In this case, both of these cages I had to remove one of the males. So there's only one male in each. They were showing a lot of aggression to each other and in each cage one of the males got really beat up um, and had to be removed. And so I'm falling into where I think this flock is going to be good. Um, now if you have too many females they can become really aggressive to each other or aggressive to the male they can beat him up. Um, so a good, good number to have is about three to four females per male. Um, is a good place to sit and I found a good ratio in this cage. Something I do want to mention with uh, your flocks is really, and I'll get into it a little bit more later as well, but when you pick a flock you want to keep it with that flock. Introducing new birds into the flock is not really a good idea as well as reintroducing and stuff. And so the flock that you raise or the group of birds together really needs to be the group that stays together. Okay, so with that said, one of the first things you're going to come across is either male-to-male -male aggression, uh, if your ratios are off, or you are going to come up more, more than likely with mating. And so you're going to see this uh, with the backs of the females' heads are going to be picked with some of their feathers. And so there's a good example right here. This is Lily, one of my quails that's in a lot of the videos. And so let me try and show here if you can see. I don't know how well you can see, but the back of her head is missing feathers here. Now that's pretty much just on the back. Sometimes it would be on the neck or the base. And that's caused, whew, that's caused by when the male goes to mate, he grabs the back of those feathers to kind of hold them down. So you're going to see right on the back of the head missing feathers. That is uh, just some of the mating. That is normal. Um, now, when the quails are showing aggression to each other, um, the missing feathers are going to be more so around the face, the eyes, um, things like that. So when they're going after each other, either your ratios are off or you have different problems like that, a lot of times they'll pick it out from the feathers. So the first thing you may notice is feathers missing from the back of the female's heads and that is the males. So if you're noticing uh, either a lot of aggression, you're going to see, well let me back up a little bit. A lot of the problems with your quail can be identified through the feathers because those are either going to show what's going on inside them or what the other birds are doing to them. So you'll see a lot of that, that mating uh, pluck. Now, if let me go to my notes here just really quick. Um, one of the other things you may see, I actually want to go over this first, was the nutrition of the quail. So if they are losing a lot of feathers, number one, you're probably going to need to up the protein uh, that you're giving your quail. I have a little example of that here, and that is just because growing feathers back takes a lot of energy. So whether it be them molting or you're just noticing them kind of falling out, one of the things it could be is nutrition. And so I like to give them a little bit more protein. Here I have crushed mealworms. I do crush them up for the quail because they like to fling their food around so that it gets a little bit more in them. So nutrition. Uh, the second thing was mating. Um, you'll see that. If you're noticing that the birds are just kind of looking a mess all together, like in this bottom cage. Now I had thought at first it may be mites. Um, now it, it's molting, I'll tell you, and so molting is another thing you, you could come across. If you look at your birds, and let me get a good example here. Here's a good example, Whoop. if you'll let me show you. So he's missing a lot of feathers on the back, or she, excuse me. Uh, a lot of them are sticking up. She kind of just looks a mess. She really looks pretty bad. Now this is molting. I'm going to put her back here before I stress her out too much. So 
your quail are gonna molt um, even more often than the chickens. There's several things that will cause this and it's not always at the same time. It's not all the birds in the same cage necessarily, but about once, twice, sometimes even three times a year, the birds are gonna molt. A lot of times this will happen in mid to late summer as well as winter as well, which is kind of a really bad time because they're getting cold. Um, it can also happen if you're, if you're introducing a lot of stress, uh, if there's predators around, we're now I'm pushing their eggs artificially with light making sure they get 14 hours of light a day so some of that can cause them to molt as well so then this bottom cage um, all the birds look like that they all kind of look a mess and so they are molting one of the most important things you can do if you're noticing feather loss on these birds and let me hop in here a quail book yes awesome thanks Nick thumbs up uh, you keep three females per male and it worked great for us but definitely only one male per group or smaller cages yeah right on you got it um, so anyways with the molting um, uh, this whole cage kind of looks like that and so what you're really going to need to do if you're noticing feather loss or aggression in the birds is watch them take 10 minutes a week when you're doing some chores on there just to watch each cage and the interactions now this bottom one I had watched for a while and I did not see that any of the birds were picking on each other it didn't look like uh, aggression really it didn't look like self mutilation they weren't sitting there just pulling all their feathers out they were preening but not like they had mites or things like that. And so with watching them, I was able to determine what they're doing is they're going through a molt in that bottom cage. So even though they look kind of whack, <laughs> uh, they are okay, they will be fine. So in this top cage, going back up here again, one of the other things you're gonna see is quail aggression. Now, I talked about male on male aggression, which I had too many males in each cage. Sometimes you'll have aggression with the females. So in this top cage, I actually had an extremely aggressive female that I had to remove. And she was beating up this one on the end, the one in, in my thumbnail picture. And so let me show this. And this is actually a lesson I have learned through failures and whatnot. Oop, let me show this little bird. Well, if she'll let me, let me catch her. They're squirrely. So you'll notice she's missing all the feathers on the back of her head, all the way down her back. Her eye is actually not swollen anymore, but it was really swollen. One thing you'll notice with quail aggression is a lot of times they go for the feathers around the eyes. They'll go for the eyes as well. Occasionally they will peck eyes out. More than likely a lot of times it's just that eye is really swollen and needs time to come down. Now when I saw her the back of her head was bloody. She had blood on her back. Um, her eye was swollen shut. She was in the corner here with her head down. I really thought she was gonna be lost. And when I had seen this before in my cages, the first thing I did instinctually is what you're gonna wanna do is I reached in and I wanted to grab her and take her out and put her by herself and let her heal up. Now, this can be a very bad idea. If they, or a good idea, and let me explain. If quails see one of the other ones is injured or is bleeding or different or something like that, a lot of times they will turn on that quail and they will injure it even more, peck it, possibly kill it. So if when I saw it injured, what I needed to do was stop and observe the cage for about five to 10 minutes and see what was going on. By doing that and not initially just reaching in and removing that quail, I was able to see that one of the females was being really aggressive. And I noticed that because what she wasn't only picking on this one, she was going around picking on all the others and they were getting patches of feathers pulled from their face and their lower back. And so I removed that aggressive one. That is what you wanna do if, if at all possible is remove the aggressive bird. Now, when you remove that bird, um, it's not to come back to the flock. That's a permanent decision. If I was to remove the beat up one too, more than likely that's a permanent decision. One of the biggest reasons you can have aggression in the quails is by introducing new birds into a set flock or a set family or group. Um, and when you take a quail away for a while and then reintroduce it, it, they could do it all again and beat it up again because it's a new bird. There are ways you can do that using new cages, rearranging their cages, mixing a, the same ratio of birds together. You can cut smells with vinegar and things. So there are ways to reintroduce birds, but overall it's a bad idea. If you end up removing the bird, that's pretty much a, a final decision. So this one, I was able by watching this cage to find the aggressive female and remove her. And I put her over there. And then I watched 
for another five to ten minutes to make sure that the other birds weren't going to turn on this one because it was injured. They didn't. They allowed this one to heal and as you can see she's hopping around there just fine and healing. This was the best uh, scenario or circumstance that happened. I was able to remove the aggressive bird so that one's not going to be passing on genes because that can be passed down genetically. Um, that bird's not going to be beating up the others as well as this one's going to be able to heal. Now I think the problem in here was a couple parts. One, I think our, it was a little too overcrowded. We've been having, with me doing construction out here, and then with neighbors, cats, and things, uh, as well as us being urban homestead, we get a lot of loud noises. And so, uh, shared a live stream on our community tab. Hey, thanks, Nick. I appreciate that, man. That's awesome. You guys rock. I've been getting a couple shares, and so that's cool. I really appreciate you guys. Sorry I'm getting caught in my talking. I'll try and check chat out a little bit more. But um, uh, anyway, so that was the best scenario. And so these birds are healing up. They're doing fine. Um, and you do want to watch them. That's the best thing you can do. Another thing you can run into, oh, I'm sorry. And so I removed that f aggressive female. I put her in the cage. Now, I had had a aggressive male in one of my other cages where there was just too many, and he was beating up all the other birds in the cage. So I removed him about at the same time as well. And I decided just to put the two aggressive ones together. So they're now a pair. And we'll go back and look at those birds in a minute, but they're doing fine there. One thing you can also do sometimes is, and sometimes you need to watch and be careful. If you have a real aggressive bird that decides it's gonna go around and bully birds, a lot of times you can identify that one because it will have all its feathers. It looks fine because it's the bully. And the other ones will be kind of beat up. Um, if you can identify that one right away, sometimes you can take that bird, put him in with another flock right away. Now when he tries to be the big bird and the bully, they're not going to take that because he's the new guy. And so a lot of times they'll put him in his place. They'll beat him up a little bit. And then I can quickly put him back in the cage where he'll sulk and be fine. I have had some success with that. You're, everyone's going to get different results though, so you really need to watch. So we've gone over feather loss from uh, mating, from nutrition, from uh, molting, and from aggression. Um, those are going to be some of the biggest reasons you have feather loss. Another one you may encounter is mites or pests. It sounds gross and at first I thought, oh no, I can't have them. It was something I had battled at one time with the chickens and conquered. Um, there's ways to do it, but it's pretty common with birds, especially if you're having issues with like dampness and water and things like we've been fighting here and other stuff like that. So today I actually want to go over a few ways you can battle mites. And so uh, let me go to my notes here real quick just because, oh, before I get to mites, let me back up one more time. Another reason you may see feather loss is stress. Quails are very ex susceptible to stress. So if you have a lot of people coming in and out, if their cage isn't covered like in here and there's animals flying above as you can see now them doing, um, loud noises or a lot going on around them, predators, they can stress out. That can send them into a molt, it can send them into self-mutilation where they're pulling feathers. Um, they can actually jump. Now these cages look really short and I've talked about that before. That's for a reason because the quails get startled and they'll jump and hit the top of the cage. <laughs> and that can at times uh, cause injury and feather loss as well. So stress is a big one as well. And part of what I think has been going on with my birds. Get some water here. So that brings me on to the next uh, thing I wanted to talk about a little bit, and that is the mites and the pest. There are a couple ways you can go about battling this. Now, one of the things you should be doing, I believe, with your birds anyways, is giving them dirt baths. This is something I saw some people were doing, some weren't. Specifically with the egg rollout cage, they weren't getting dirt baths um, in a lot of people's videos. It's something I'm going to do. You know, when they take those dirt baths, it gets up in their feathers just like the birds, the chickens do. It helps to get away mites and things like that. So before I get into that, we are going to put some dirt baths in for these guys. Um, and uh, then we're also going to talk about diatomaceous earth. We're going to talk about some chemical ways you can get rid of mites, as well as we're going to do a DIY uh, homemade uh, way you can battle this. So first, let's go back outside again real quick. I want to show you these other cages and a couple differences in my cages when you're talking about stress a little bit. Sorry, I keep backing up. Um, so this cage here, they don't really have a lot of hiding places. It's great because it's clean, it has the egg rollout, it can sit here, 
um, but they can't really hide. So in my other cages, which I'm going to show back here, and I and uh, I think I'll we'll actually go around back there. This is one I built myself. Now it's a little bit too big, and it's going to be used for um, a grow out pen, basically. But let's come in here real quick. And so these quail really don't have a lot of problems. There's not a lot of feather loss. There's more room in here. You will see some spots. But they have sandboxes, ways they can get away from um, kind of craziness. This cage, I think, works a little bit better in the urban setup here that we have. These are these two real aggressive ones that are now buddies. And then a couple in here. There's actually three males in here. Now the males, you, you generally don't want to house males together. Um, they can battle. These ones are doing just fine, so I watch them. Another thing I did want to point out is if you do remove quail, you notice I put those two as partners in there, or kind of a couple. Quail are extremely social birds and extremely social animals. And so you don't want to put them just by themselves. Your natural instinct may be to stick it by itself and it will be fine there. Uh, you really don't want to do that. Um, best bet if you have the aggressive ones and stuff and they're not going to be together is to just send it to cull that one. That's probably going to be your best bet. Um, culling the real aggressive ones is kind of a good call anyways or if you have two males. So I do need to get on that. All right. So you saw the sandboxes in the other cages. The sand does a few things. It helps to get rid of the mites. It helps their feathers when they're just generally looking kind of like crud. Um, it helps them to clean themselves. Um, this is also going to add some grit into their system. They do need that and that does help with their nutrition as well to process things, especially if you're going to be giving them the more protein and whatnot. So normally I use play sand from uh, Home Depot or whatnot and I'm going to look at chat real quick here. Let's see. Hey, uh, J. Mary Laststone, good to see you in here. Remember, I said I don't like the taste of quail. Well, I don't, but I still like the birds, just not for eating. Yeah, that's fine. I, I do enjoy the taste, but to be honest, I really like having them more than eating them. They're kind of an insurance policy there, and they've been providing money with their eggs and other uh, things like that. And so I'm, I'm with you a little bit there, although I do like the taste. And Tiny Tim Posey says, I may get quail someday, but we will be a while now. Some predators got into my chickens last week and killed my modest flock, except for two, most of the flock, except for two roosters. They were scared and up as high as they could get. Wow, I'm so sorry. Yeah, that's a bummer. We've had neighbors' cats trying to get in here. They haven't been successful yet, but I think some of that stress of that has caused some of my chickens not to lay, so... I'm so sorry you're having those problems. And then, oh, yep, Psych86 is in here, awesome. Answered my question. I was wondering if you treat the sand. Okay, so normally I use play sand. This time I'm just using sand from the backyard. I usually use the play sand just because it's clean and all, but I just have some sand here from New Mexico. And as far as treating it goes, this is food grade diatomaceous earth. I, this gets mixed into their food a little bit. This kills bugs and things that may be in there, soaks up moisture. This actually gets put in our preserved food as well. This I can take and sprinkle a little bit of this on top of the water here. It's not bad for the birds, but it will keep flies away. And I actually put a little bit of this in the sand as well. And so this is gonna kill birds. This is crushed up uh, shell and it will uh, kill any of those. So this is probably the go-to first thing I would do. Uh, it needs to be done from time to time, I believe anyways, but um, this is gonna help kill any of those mites or take care of some crazy feather problems. So these birds, since they've been in this new cage, haven't had their bath. So they, they'll probably hop in there and love it once they get used to it. But we're gonna enter these in here. Okay, now if you're having mites on the birds, and the reason I was able to determine these ones was molting and probably not mites, is you really want to look at the bird, observe it. The mites are going to gather in cracks, usually up under the wing, uh, sometimes around the back of the head or places like that. And what you'll see is a bunch of little black dots, little black spots, sometimes red, and those are the little mites. And you'll see them clump together and you'll know that's your problem. I don't know how well you can see this, but let me show you. They love their baths. I don't know what that was, but Urban Homestead. So 
So they'll get in there about one at a time and get that up in their feathers. So they, they absolutely love that and that's a treat for them. But um, another thing you can do is take this diatomaceous earth and a lot of times when you buy this, it comes with a little squirter and uh, that's used a lot of times to get rid of bed bugs or things. You could use that in your house to kill bugs uh, by putting it along edges. You can actually take your bird and once or twice a day hold it and blow some of that powder up under its wings and things as well if you're having uh, the mites or problems. And uh, if you do that once or twice a day, that can help kill them as well. I like that method more than getting them wet just because quail really do not do well with being chilled. So getting them wet is kind of always a iffy thing with me. However, some of the other things you can do, and I'm gonna find the name. Okay, so there's some chemical things you can get on the market, and if you're really having an infestation, you might need to use this. I did have to turn to this with the chickens once a little bit, and that's just mainly because I needed to clean the inside of the coops. Mites and things will hang in the cracks and stuff, so you really need to clean uh, all the birds as well as everything around them. So you can use permethrin, I believe is how it's pronounced, and that's a spray. Um, that you can spray on them. If you're doing that, you wanna do it once or twice a day, get up under those spots. I don't suggest doing it at night or in the winter or anything, because again, if they get chilled, your birds will die. Um, the method I wanna talk about, which is a homemade method, and I'll hop in chat real quick before we do that. Let's see. <clears throat> Wonder if you could add something like cinnamon in the sand, because cinnamon is good for getting rid of bugs. Hey, that's a great idea. You know, I didn't think about that. So I do use different things around here in the coop to keep roaches and stuff out. I use a vinegar and peppermint oil solution and that works really well. But cinnamon in there, I'm gonna try that next time. That's a great idea. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, what I have here is a natural way and this is a spray so it is gonna get them wet. And this is a garlic spray. And so this can be used on chickens, on quail, on birds like that. And what all it is is water, garlic uh, juice, or garlic water. And basically you can juice garlic or squeeze it or something. How I got this was I just took the can, a jar of minced garlic we have, and poured some of that off. And you want one ounce of that and 10 ounces of water. So I just take my 10 ounces of water here. Take an ounce of your garlic juice, and I strained that out so it's just the, the water or the juice. And it smells garlicky. So we'll put that in the water, real simple. And then we're gonna add a teaspoon of some essential oils. That's really to cover the garlic smell. I like to use lavender. So we can take a teaspoon of lavender. And so let me get that. Oh, good night, Tiny Tam. Thanks for showing up. Really appreciate it. Yeah, there we go. Keep those predators out. Oh, was that you? Oh, phone's about to die. That's why. Okay, well, we will see you later. Good night. All right, so I'm going to add some of that uh, lavender, and that's just for the smell. This is going to make a good amount, and so what I'll do is I would just take this and put it in a little spray bottle. And I'm not uh, going to use this on the birds right now, so I'm not actually going to fill this. But I would fill this up, and then the same way you would just squirt it up under the wings and on the bird once or twice a day. Now I'm not going to do it right now. One, I don't have mites. Two, it is night, and you do not want them to get chilled. But that is a natural way that you can go about getting rid of mites. Anyways, and so this was... Uh, Anyway, so that's several different ways I went over of some of the first things you're gonna notice on your birds probably is feather loss. That's normal and aggression. And so if you're noticing some of those things, I went over a couple ways that I've learned to deal with that tonight. Um, I'm gonna turn to chat a little bit here before we wrap it up. Does anyone have any questions or things maybe I can answer on feather loss, on aggression, things I've encountered? I'm sure I missed all kinds of things. I'm just now getting myself together a little bit. Let's see. So people are saying good night. Awesome. Well, it looks like we still got about eight people in here and I've been on for about 40 minutes. I am exhausted. The sun is going down a little bit uh, earlier now. So we again are gonna be starting our chat at 8, 7.45 uh, mountain time next week. So just an hour earlier. 
uh, than this week. And um, next week is going to be part two, where we are going to talk a little bit more about uh, the inner parts of the birds. And so we'll be going into their nutrition, um, what I feed them, and uh, a little bit more in depth than things you need to give them, like protein to grow feathers or the calcium for eggs. Some of the ratios and stuff we'll be going into next week. In part three, we will be addressing eggs, their issues with eggs, how much they're going to lay or how often and how to get maximum production out of that. And then in the and problems there. And then in the fourth installment of the quail problems, we're going to go into their feet uh, to the bottom. And so in the uh, bumblefoot and, and uh, some different things like that. So that'll be the fourth part of this little installment. And so as you can see, they are loving that dirt. They are digging around in there. All right. Well, that's about all I really had for tonight. Not too, too much. Let's see. We still got some people in here. So, great stream. Well, thanks. I hope it helps someone out in some way there. Um, I don't know if anyone had any questions, any celebrations, anything going on you'd like to point out this week. Um, let's see. I had some, well, hey, I have some celebrations. The Grafted Branch Homestead channel actually here got uh, shouted out over on Papa Pepper's community page, so that was awesome. I saw that there. Um, let's see. Um, definitely making headway towards being able to remove ourselves from the system a little bit, so that's awesome. Yeah. All right. Cool. So that is what I have tonight, and um, I am going to put together a actual video series that I can edit and go through uh, so as to organize myself a little bit more on these specific things. So if you people are looking for that, they'll be able to find a little bit more of the specifics there. But thanks for joining me. It's great to show some going around, uh, going ons around here at the Urban Homestead. Um, it's good to share a little bit of my knowledge and passion with the quail and the birds as we progress through this. Um, I do want to have my wife on uh, some videos and streams to do some more cooking and show some videos like that. I also actually want to have uh, CDB hopefully on at some point here if you're still willing to go over some bird uh, facts and um, general care and things as well. Um, let's see. I know that uh, Psych out there is going to be doing some stuff with a forge soon here. Uh, so I do actually want to get a little bit of that in some video as well and doing some forging. And so that would be awesome. Have a good night, Jay Mary. All right. Well, I need to get going to it. And uh, so thank you everyone for joining. Please hit the thumbs up on the way out. That really helps. Maybe leave a comment um, or something when it becomes available. And until next time. Stay strong, and we'll see you next week here. Oh, and thank you, CDB, for moderating. I appreciate it.